Oh, <laughs> no cheeky trials maneuver there, Bill. Hi everyone, we're back with another bike check. You like bike checks, they usually get lots of views and uh, we need all the help we can get at the minute. So we've got new Super Enduro bike, new Super Enduro practice bike. Oh, <laughs> no stand. cheeky trials maneuver there, Bill. I'm gonna get off this stand. As you were. I was actually sat at the stand because, because it's a practice bike, it's not really exactly what it's meant to be. So it's got a black frame, it's meant to have a blue frame, ignore that. Don't Fred, bring attention to it. No, don't bring attention to it. Apologies if anyone from Husqvarna Racing Department is watching, please don't tell us off. Try my hardest. So here we are, Husqvarna FE350 in Super Enduro trim. It's going to be my new training bike. I've done a Super Enduro bike check before. I'm trying to think what we could do different to what we usually do. Any of you have got any suggestions, Ed? Tommy's actually filming this, it's a bit terrifying. Do you know what you're doing? Are you confident this is... I was just enjoying... You know, watching. Watching your prodigies. Yeah, my two. Look what you've mine. created. Yeah, media time. And he's dealing. He's dealing with customer service on cakes. We're just busy out here creating. I've only got ten minutes left, Bill. Yeah, it does make a difference. Do you like this hat, by the way? This is a good hat. A bit corduroy. Yeah, it's nice. Look at that. Right. Where can I buy that? Because I've looked on the <laughs> text page. It's not on there. <laughs> anyway, right. Let's try and get the shit done. The same colours as the last bike check, which was my two-stroke hard enduro bike. Um, obviously the Super Enduro, the colours will probably change by round two of the Super Enduro Championship because that will be next year. But for now, everything's like this, so... I just thought people like to know what kind of stuff I run, how my setup is, that kind of stuff. A lot of people knew. Well, not as many people as there should be new, so if you are new, subscribe. Thanks. We'll start up top. Pro tape a medium half waffle. And my grips, domino throttle housing, throttle cables, they actually make quite a big difference if you would like a nice light throttle. Woo! Brembo clutch, master cylinder, Brembo front brake. Um, this is actually the old style front brake, which I just prefer the lever position, the bite, the feel, a bit more power. We actually have the factory uh, caliper down the bottom which is a little bit better. I think it copes with heat a little bit better and looks a nice bit bling bling. Uh, also down there at the front, we want a disc guard for Super Enduro. Um, it's usually carbon. On my race bike, it's carbon. There's obviously budget cuts because we've got a plastic one on this training bike. But handlebars, this is possibly one of the, my nice, and in fact, it's not the most asked question that I ever get, but it's quite largely asked. And it's quite a difficult question to answer because on them, just says Husqvarna. I said it before, so if you are watching old bike check, I will come to some new parts in a minute, but... So this handlebar is the handlebar that comes stock on a motocross bike. The handlebar that comes stock on an enduro bike is a little bit taller. Um, so I run this handlebar on all my bikes, motocross, super enduro, hard enduro, classic enduro, I always run this one. I always run the bar mount on the middle hole and the backward facing setting have these little blingy things on the master cylinders just in case you crash have my clutch lever bent up a little bit got some broken fingers at the minute that gives you a bit of context as to when we're filming this if you're an eagle-eyed subscriber viewer lights don't actually have lights for super enduro looks like i do this is that well this is just a normal headlight it's actually a hard enduro headlight so we're going to be in loads of trouble with this video for actual races Something quite cool. Uh, the headlights actually fake. If you look closely at one of my Super Enduro race bikes, it's not that it makes much difference, but if you like looking closely, when I was a kid, I used to like look closely at everything. Who had cable tires when? I would have noticed that. So, if you got eagle eyes, lock on the front of my bike. Um, WP Explore forks or cone valves. If you're old school, um, I think the label's actually still on this one. Bolt Super Enduro 4.7 springs. If anyone cares, don't think that's classified information. Well, it probably is a little bit. I suppose you don't know what else is going on. 4.7 springs, which is quite heavy. If you don't understand about suspension, you know what I'm on about. Horse shot device, obviously. We're starting the start gate. 
XL rims, front and back, stock hubs, Brembo discs, a very good disc. Um, I think I've used them since 2018. And I think I'm not saying I've done it, I've never actually bent one. We do run um, the disc guard on the back too, which is quite important for Super Enduro, I think. A lot of rock sections and quite often because you're not hitting things perfectly straight, you see after like a few times out on the track that there's, there's not a lot of, well, there's quite a few areas of missing paint off the disc guards. Uh, 22 mil offset clamps, which is stock. Uh, so no, no change there for Super Enduro. Uh, have it quite stiff. This actually probably isn't stiff enough. I haven't, literally haven't read it. St picked it up off stand this morning. He's just built it and then my fingers broke, but I'm going to head to Spain as soon as that's finished, ready to kick its head in around the metal park. One other thing I've just thought of is, um, you'll see we have a start and um, a kill switch as like individual buttons. And um, that's basically because we, we don't have a standard wiring harness. So every mechanic builds his wiring harness or built wires his bike exactly how he wants it obviously just so that if something goes wrong they know exactly where each wire is where each connector is if you ever like looking at my bike or a factory bike and wondering how it works they've got just individual buttons obviously this bike has no lights so there's no need for them wires no indicators no stuff like that a it obviously saves weight and b it's because the wiring harness is done you know each wire at a time by the mechanic so he knows exactly where it is just thought I'd. Have we got a backup button on that? Uh, no, this bike doesn't have a backup button because it's just a practice bike, but more often than not, um, there'll be a backup start button in here. Well, most motocross guys do it and stuff like that. Uh, you see people pressing this one, like on a start gate or practice start or whatever, just to test it works. They're pressing the button down here, it's usually because it's a backup start button. In case you have a big in. Actually, this is the wrong seat, but it's blue, so I'll put it on the bike. Um, this is a standard seat for Super Enduro. I use a 20 mil higher seat. Um, Super Enduro and normal Enduro. It's just hard Enduro. I use the stock seat for. What else we got? FMF front pipe and silencer, full system. Uh, short front pipe because the power needs to like be really fast power delivery and no baffle in the silencer, just so we have a nice loud noise in it. Back crackles when you shut off, that's the main reason. But nah, I do actually prefer it out. If the track's super wet and super slippy, um, sometimes I'll put it in just to smooth the power off a little bit, but I like my power to just be really hard hitting and aggressive so I can uh, ride aggressively and use, what's the right word? Like, so the power's hit super hard so I can, if I wanna do like a last minute splat something or kind of, move about the track quite a lot. I quite like the power to arrive pretty instantly. It means you've got to be quite smooth and delicate with the clutch. Um, but obviously, I'm a trials rider, so I can manage with that. Recluse. <laughs> I'm going to leave it at that and let you guess what the, everyone else is inside. <laughs> See you in a bit. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Nah, um, I'm back. Billet clutch cover. A, because it's rock hard. It is a recluse inside, but it is not an automatic recluse. Same with my two-stroke, same with all of my bikes. Um, it's a recluse basket, but the actual plates are standard clutch plates, literally uh, same as what come in the bike or what you buy. Diaphragm, the bevel, all the rest of it, that's stock. Use, I don't actually know the name of this brake tip. I've got a feeling it's Enduro Engineering, but I'm not entirely sure, I could be wrong. Uh, they don't sponsor us. If they do want to sponsor us, we'll get the name right for next time. Like this brake tip, they make two models, a small one and a big one. I like the short one. Raptor pegs, obviously, you already knew that. Five mil down and five mil back. For Super Enduro, it used to be 10 mil back, but now I've gone back down to five mil back. Scenery change. P3 sub guard. Uh, don't run that for hard enduro, but I really like how it is for super enduro. It's like so slim and doesn't flex, doesn't move. It's obviously calm and rock hard. So it's a solid structure on a Husqvarna or any bike with a linkage, the most important part of a super enduro bike. Well, no, actually that's a lie. It isn't the most important part, but it's pretty essential to have a good linkage slash shock slider life saver. WP Exact Pro Shock or Tracks, as it used to be called. Don't have the track system in it though. What spring we've got on here? I think it's either 48 or 51. It's 48. 48 spring. Set up for me. I'm not telling you how it's set up, but it's set up good. 
Radiators, standard? Uh, I'm not entirely sure, I think standard. It's 1.8 bar cap. One thing um, that is pretty trick, which uh, it's pretty small, but if you've got good eyes, you'll notice uh, our rear brakes don't have a sight glass in. It's just a solid piece of metal. Smash the like button if that was a good tip. Well, it's not really a tip because I don't know if you can buy it. But... The whole engine itself is pretty trick, to be honest. Obviously, it's a factory bike. Factory engine, and for Super Enduro, we have, um, or for a four-stroke engine, we have like a million different options for configuration, uh, but I'm super happy with mine. I literally haven't changed my engine or my mapping uh, since 2019. You probably could get away without having a fan on it for a training bike, to be honest. It's mainly for in the arenas when, um, obviously, not much airflow. A lot of other bikes around and quite often the tracks can be quite slow, um, but there's a fan on the bike just in case I take it motocross in or I go trail riding or if it rains. Can't ride Super Enduro and I have to go and smashing up some riverbeds and stuff, which a 350 is more than capable of. Me and Stan were actually just having this discussion last night that it would be cool to do a full year doing every race on a 350 just to kind of prove what it was capable of. I think that's a pretty good idea. Does anyone else? Oof, do you hear that? <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> I, hope, I hope you just heard all that. Michelin Enduro Medium, uh, 9900 front tyre, always, every bike, every race, whatever the occasion, I run the big front tyre. Rear tyre, for the race in the stadiums and stuff like that, uh, I would 99% or 90% of the time run the extreme, the super soft. Um, but because this is a practice bike in the outdoor tracks in, in Spain are so dry and hard, it's still better to use a soft tire, but it means I'd have to change it every day. And when I'm there by myself, that does my head in. So I just use the medium. Have it kind of like middle of the road, like way, way harder than an extreme setup, but obviously not, not rock hard because there's rocks, there's logs, but I would say I have my moose on the harder side. I, I prefer, especially for a race, I prefer a bigger moose, but a softer tire. It means I don't get tire roll when I do jumps and I can, I can hit stuff hard and um, you know, I don't feel it rim out because you don't want to be rimming out, do you? Uh, I think we're about there. You can see there's random bits of blue bling. Some of them are new, this one isn't. Stanley's obviously been recycling. So far, like, obviously we've only been doing the channel like two years. And for the last two years, like realistically, there's been no big changes to any of my bikes. So they've all been quite similar. Um, but next year, there's actually one just there. But for next year, uh, there's new chassis, new swinging arm, new engine, new plastics, new literally everything, I think, uh, other than the wheels. So hang tight. There will be some newness coming soon. Obviously, you've seen the 450 motocross bike build. Um, which is already the new generation bike. That's obviously going to transfer to the Enduro models, uh, which will be like the 24 model, but I think I will be on them from the start of the hard Enduro season next year. So new stuff is coming. Hold tight. And that's about it. Wish me luck for the Super Enduro season coming up. I'm so excited to get back. Well, I'm so excited to get back riding full stop. Obviously, if you're new here and you don't know about me, go and watch some old videos. I've had a pretty terrible year, to be honest, but can't complain. Still making videos, still riding motorbikes. Thanks for watching. See you in a bit.